Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the IMR Assault Rifle. This is one of my favorite guns in the game. As a matter of fact, when I prestige the first time, this is the first unlock that I took with me, and the gameplay that you're going to get to see while I use it is largely what I would call conservative long range gameplay or poking gameplay. There'll be a little bit of close range stuff, but it's going to be very conservative, high survival rate gameplay. I'm not going to die as much as I do in normal in depth episodes, but it's not going to be quite as chaotic either. The damage on the IMR will be 35 up close, but decrease to 24 at a distance. That means it'll be a 3 to 5 shot kill, depending on how far away you are from the enemies. And it's good to know that you don't even need a whole burst to kill somebody just in case they're moving too fast. You can miss one shot and still kill them. One unusual thing about this weapon, among many unusual things, is that as per my hand testing, which we do all know is prone to human error, headshots deal 1.02x damage. It has like a maybe a 1.15, it's just a very tiny tiny headshot damage multiplier. I guess this is to keep it from doing crazy things and getting melty headshots on people, but the headshot multiplier is very insignificant and at most ranges won't matter to anything, so I'd highly advise against doing headshots. The range on the weapon is what I would describe as medium. This is the medium drop-off range, or the furthest point at which you can get a one burst kill. Not the worst I've ever seen, but I have seen better. It's really more of a two hit or quit gun, so it won't make the biggest difference. Much better than the ARX and some of the other assault rifles, like the BAL or H bar, but then again, it's burst fire, so there is some trade off on that. Speaking of the burst fire, there's a big question about how fast this gun shoots because we all know it shoots fast. But the rate of fire of the burst, how fast the four bullets shoot, is 978 RPM, which is quite fast for a Call of Duty game. I do feel that it was probably programmed to be a thousand RPM, but we have that frame rounding error that I reference in like every in depth episode, dragging it down a little bit. And the burst delay is the same as the burst delay of most of the other weapons in the game at 0.1 one six seven seconds or exactly 10 frames or one sixth of a second and do keep in mind that unlike most of the weapons which are like two or three round this is a four round burst assault rifle and if you've been keeping up with those statistics those are very very similar to the statistics of the m8a1 from black ops 2 so if you were a big fan of the m8a1 this one performs very similarly though it doesn't have quite as good of a range it is still very good at what it does one of the unusual things about this weapon it is the 3d printer gun this is the weapon that prints ammunition constantly it has a 3d printer on it so it's constantly regenerating ammunition and the stat that i'm going to use on this one is ammo regen it'll regenerate four rounds of ammunition every five seconds and this does not go to the magazine but rather to your reserve ammunition which means that in order to regenerate an entire magazine of 36 rounds you're going to need to be alive for 45 seconds sounds like that'd be kind of easy peasy but in call of duty it's a fast-paced chaotic game oftentimes you're going to die before you regenerate a whole magazine but this is a good weapon if you're a pub stomper or if you like surviving, or if you if you just really plan to stick with a gun and you don't want to run Scavenger, you can run this one because with conservative play, you're almost never going to run out of ammo. The recoil, as per anyone that's ever used it will tell you, is extremely low. It's slightly lower with the foregrip, but not significantly so. I very rarely run the foregrip on this weapon. I don't feel that wall tests are necessary in this episode because you can you can phys just watch my gameplay and tell how low the recoil is. It's very easy to handle and doesn't kick very much. Matter of fact, it's one of the most pleasantly kicking guns in the entire game, except for maybe the ARX, but it has much better damage. The hip fire is okay-ish. It's not the greatest. I usually wouldn't recommend a burst fire weapon to be good at hip fire and it has the same hip fire spread as the other assault rifles but thankfully it's a three shot kill unlike a lot of them and it shoots quite fast so inside of a certain range or if you're prone or crouched you can burst uh, really hard on that hip and just kind of murder somebody it doesn't work all the time it's a little bit inconsistent but in a pinch it will see you through the fight and hip fire the iron sights are usable up close uh, I'm, I don't think that they're very good at long ranges I would not use these iron sights at long ranges I can work them at medium ranges but up close they do really good work. I don't think this is a really good up close gun just to the nature of the burst fire. If you shoot your burst and you miss, there's a big delay before you can fire again and in that time you're most often going to die, which is why uh, you wouldn't really want to be using the iron sights with this weapon. Its reload properties are a little bit unusual. It does something kind of like previous Call of Duty games where it reloads faster if you have bullets in the magazine or chambered rounds. If you have at least four bullets still in the chamber, it will reload in 1.2 seconds. It'll do the fast reload where you double tap the reload and throw away the whole magazine in 1.7 seconds, but if you empty your entire magazine and you empty out all the bullets in the chamber or whatever and go down to zero, the reload is even slower at 2.2 seconds. So I would always re or just reload the gun with at least four bullets in the chamber. It'll reload by far the fastest in that manner. 
Raise and drop times are nothing spectacular, 1.23 seconds to raise the gun and 0.55 to drop it. I'm kind of seeing a pattern here with assault rifles, I think all of them have that same drop time. Run speed is standard for the assault rifle class at 90%, nothing really to write home to your moms about there, it's just pretty normal. All the assault rifles move at that speed, so machine guns are moving a little bit faster. The best variants, and again this is a weapon where I have not unlocked very many variants, so I have not been able to test these, but based on what we know about the variants, which if a if you don't, I highly recommend you watch the variant testing episode of In-Depth. The ones that look the best for this weapon are the Boar Strike, the Feedback, and the Hunter. These are ones that uh, don't affect the major operating properties of the guns, like the magazine count or the range or anything like that. These all have very positive attributes for the weapon, and I think you'll be most comfortable with these. I think that the IMR is an excellent long-range weapon and an excellent stealth weapon. This is really not a great close-quarters combat weapon. Yeah, you can drop somebody in one burst, but if you miss a bullet or if you miss the whole burst, you're kind of screwed. I feel like this is a really, really good assault rifle for long ranges. Like, it outclasses almost everything at long ranges, which is why it was initially so popular at Gamescom, and why it's one of the only other weapons you'll ever see a pro player using. And I feel that it's an excellent stealth weapon. A adding, adding the silencer to it doesn't really hurt it very much. I mean, it does hurt the range so you are going to scale down that one burst kill range but most of the times you're going to miss a shot or two and it's a two burst anyway and the bursts are pretty quick so you can just burst burst kind of a two hit or quit and the silencer actually helps you if you do for whatever reason decide to use the iron sights it reduces the muzzle flash makes it very easy to use this is my go-to weapon for when i play search and destroy or for when i want to hang back and protect objectives in other modes when i don't want to go balls to the wall and jump on flags and bombs and hard points and stuff when i want to sit back and just slay people or in search and destroy where I have survival in mind, where I have a weapon that regenerates ammunition, is extremely accurate over long ranges, and is ideal for stealth, that's the IMR. That's where I use it. I have my, matter of fact, in one of these videos you're watching, I had Exo Mute on because I was using my Search and Destroy class in uh, Domination, which didn't really pan out so well, but it does work much better in Search and Destroy. As far as attachments goes, it's actually very simple with this gun. I feel that the best way to play is put on one optical attachment of your choice, red dot sight, variable, hybrid, just something kind of like that, and put a silencer on it. If you want to go stealthy, put a silencer on it. If you don't want to go stealthy, but still want to use it as a long-range kind of aggressive pokey weapon, just leave that off and keep your range, but you don't need a whole lot of attachments. The, uh, the Some of the ones like the foregrip, that's not very useful. Grenade launchers, we don't get into. Uh, the red dot, not the red dot, yeah, the red dot. The laser sight, yes, that'll help the hip fire, but you really shouldn't be hip firing too much with it to begin with. And things like extended mags or fast mags, you won't be needing that when you regenerate ammunition all the time, and you're going to be far enough away from your enemies in order to reload. It is kind of a popular tactic to put the stock on this weapon and kind of run around, and it helps you aim with that left stick, but in my personal experience, I found that I stay far enough away where I want really precise shots, and I'm not really strafing my enemies or trying to win gunfights or doing anything crazy like that, so the stock isn't necessarily that beneficial. And if I were doing a run and gun class and I wanted to really, you know, go in and try and get that one burst kill on people, yeah, I'd probably run the stock. Otherwise, definitely not. And as far as attack perks and other things go, I'm going to recommend Cold-Blooded again. I'm going to recommend Cold-Blooded quite a bit. That one will help you at long ranges. It'll kind of confuse the enemy as to if you are friend or foe and they might hesitate and not shoot at you in the same time you can pop them. Cloak is also very useful if you've seen me doing it here in this episode. It's probably the only weapon that I run Cloak on because with the silencer and all the stealth perks and attachments and stuff, I'll run Cloak and I'll kind of sneak around and again I'll use that hesitation. They'll miss me and then I'll turn on them and blast them with IMR and it works very, very well. I'd like to add in a small personal update slash channel update here near the end of the episode. I have renewed my sponsorship agreement with Elgato Gaming. You'll find a link to their site down there, first one in the description. Matter of fact, it links you directly to the Elgato HD60 because that's the capture card that I've been using for the last couple of months. And now that YouTube has gone 1080p 60fps, this one was designed to capture in 1080p 60fps. And I've been uploading in 1080p 60fps and gotten quite a few compliments from you guys on that one. And that's what I've been using. And what I'm going to be doing with them is making tutorials on how to do that for YouTube, how to make videos, how to do live commentaries, these sort of things. Basically technical guides, just like the in-depth episodes, but for the capture cards. No sales, no pushes, no anything crazy, just here's the product and here's how to use it better. 
Well, guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something useful. If you did, I'd highly recommend you check out the previous episode on broken sniper rifle sights. They're badly misaligned in this game, and if you sniper want to shoot accurately, you want to know how to adjust your aim. The next episode is going to be a slightly shorter one, but very interesting, on the fastest way to move in Advanced Warfare. I found how to navigate the maps faster than ever before. And as always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.